Hello, I'm Andrew. And I'm Elizabeth. Welcome to Get Rolling. Get Rolling is a video interview series profiling Newfoundland and Labrador based directors and producers. In this series, brought to you by the Nickel Film Festival, Andrew and I interview three local filmmakers, Jenny Holly, John Batcher, and Allison White, about their lives and careers in film and television. This episode features Jenny Holly. Jenny Holly is a producer for film and television. Her recent projects include Casey, Little Orphans, and Hell or Clean Water. I hope you enjoy our interview. Thank you for doing this with me. I feel like I've heard you speak a lot because you are a mentor through NIFCO for many different things. And I've been to a bunch of your workshops, but now I get you all to myself. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've, I've got some questions that, you know, I sent it to you in an email that we can get through, but I'm, I'm really just kind of excited to ask you more about you and your life really <laughs> not to be creepy about sure, it yeah, yeah. so away. I think you grew up in town right mm -hmm. mainly yeah I I'm from Toronto but I moved here when I was like six or seven so okay. really really young so yeah no like everything I remember is from here yeah cool and I'm interested if you saw yourself as a filmmaker as a child like is that something that was in your mind like did you make home movies or it's funny you say that um I definitely did I have tons of like those old you know little VHS like video cameras of home movies that I used to do with my friends all the time but I never envisioned myself as a filmmaker I, th I think partly because I grew up here and I didn't know it was an option like I I, I, lots of people did and it's great that I think more and more people are starting to realize that it's an option but I just didn't know about the industry here I wasn't really um, familiar with it so it was always like a passion of mine but not something I was like moving towards um, I guess so I kind of like accidentally fell into it and it just it just felt so right, <laughs> I suppose, that I kind of kept going down the path. So when you were graduating high school, mm. what did you think you were gonna do or what steps were you taking then? If you weren't necessarily taking filmmaking career steps, what, what were you doing? Um, I was one of these people who was told by my mother that I had to go to university and that I went in there not knowing a clue what I wanted to do. And I just did random courses forever until eventually I had done so many I could put a degree together. <laughs> it was like, I was, I didn't have this like clear vision. I didn't go into school going, I wanna be this or I wanna be that. I had no idea. And it's funny now because I think it worked out for the best because of not knowing I fell into film which I think is where I was always meant to be. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe why I didn't have a clear path when I was younger. But yeah, I just went to school and I ended up graduating with a um, sociology and psychology degree. Um, and I kind of was like, okay, what are my options now? I really like to continue this path, need to do more schooling. Like I'd have to go on and do my master's or my PhD. And I just I didn't want to do it. Um, so I ended up um, graduating and just my aunt was working or friends with Mary Sexton at the time or still is and as she Mary was looking for she's a like a local producer here and she was looking for someone to do some come in and do some filing and I was like well I have free time because I'm graduated and don't know what I'm doing with my life so I went in and started filing for Mary and within like a few weeks just like fell into the film industry and ended up staying with it um since then and that was six years ago which doesn't sound like a long time but it I don't know it, it kind of feels like forever in a way too, yeah you know? well yeah you and you have certainly gotten a lot done in those six years 
that is such a funny story. Like it seems like it really was completely random. Um, it really that was. Connection. Yeah, just, uh, she was actually in the process of just starting to prep the film Madi. And um, so it was such an amazing experience because I ended up working with her and, and the other producers of that film, like in early, early prep. And I got to see that film right to the very end. So like I worked on it during prep, production, rap, and even like onwards, um, you know, I was really lucky that they got, they took me to some of the festivals with it. Um, Cause I was like the producer's assistant on it. Mm. Um, and I was like film school in a way, like, yeah. <laughs> to, you know what I mean? Just like seeing all the different um, avenues and perspectives and everything that goes into making a film. Like, obviously they had been working on it for years before, and I'm sure we're working on it for years after too, but I, I got to see a lot, which was really eye-opening and inspiring. And yeah, like I said, it was almost like kind of going to film school in, in, a, yeah. in a way. So especially um, to be there behind the scenes on such a big feature film too, like local yeah. in a way, but you know, definitely one it of the biggest far. films. Yeah, it went yeah. really, really far. And, um, you know, had like, like big stars in it. And, you know, so it, it definitely attracted, I think, um, a wide audience for sure. And it was just a fabulous movie on top of it. But yeah, no, it was, it was an amazing experience, I got to say. And, and for it to be my first, yeah. like I walked in, I remember on my first day, and like of, of production and I sat down at like the lunchroom didn't know a soul like not anyone besides the producers really and um someone was talking about a call sheet and I was like what's a call sheet <laughs> I had no idea how to read a call sheet I had no idea about anything and I remember they like sat down and they showed me how to do all these things and read a one line <laughs> yeah it was it was you know, I think back, I'm like, wow, that was probably really intimidating, but I was just so green that I didn't even know yeah. what I didn't know. Uh huh. And yeah, I just had a great time on that. There was, you know, really good camaraderie and they, people like took me under their wing and taught me a lot. And like, you know, Mary, for example, and then I ended up working with Mary for a few years after that, which again was a big learning experience. And she took me on lots of the projects that she was working on. And eventually it got to a point where I was like ready to branch out on my own. So I, um, and that's how I got involved with NIFCO, uh, mm -hmm. doing picture start stuff. Yeah. This sounds like a very like <laughs> classic, successful mentorship story, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess it really was. Yeah. Someone just kind of took me under their wing and uh, multiple people. And I think that's, if you're not, like, you know, if this is for people who are trying to get into the industry, I think it's a really important aspect is to try mm -hmm. and find somebody that, you know, can help show you the ropes. Because this, even if you go to film school, I've worked with many people who have and talked to many people who have, there's still no clear path on how to get a film made. Short film, feature film, like, yeah, there's these certain applications and stuff like that, but everyone has its own unique story. And so I think like having a mentor or someone that you can kind of go to and talk with and get advice from is, is a really um, smart decision if you, if you have the opportunity to do that, right? Um, it helped me a lot get to, I feel like where I am and produced what I've produced, so. Yeah, I think that we're lucky in Newfoundland and Labrador that there are a lot of established filmmakers that are very willing to chat with more emerging artists and tell them their story. And like you're saying, like take those people under their wing a little bit because even just that, you know, you getting to like tag along to a bunch of things on the Maudie journey, like I, I found, or I hear a lot of people say, and, and I feel this way too, that one of the most intimidating things, like thinking about making films is thinking about like the scope of the whole project. Like it's just so large 
And there's so much unknown that if you're brand new and green, a lot of the times you don't get to see those things. And so you don't even know what you should be working on to get there. And so Mm -hmm. to be able to work and, and shadow those people, it seems like a really awesome opportunity. Oh, it, it really was like, um, yeah, I, I, I know exactly what you mean. Cause I've been there. Um, like when I produced my first feature, I mean, it was, it was fantastic experience, but what I've learned since then and how much easier that could have been <laughs> if I knew then kind of what I know now, yeah. um, you know, it's, yeah, I guess that's, it's really great that, you know, you are doing these sorts of videos too, because I think it opens up the community and people are like, oh, like I've worked with that person before. Maybe I can reach out and ask them this question. And I've had people do that to me. And I'm so happy that I can say, do this, don't go down the path that I did originally, you know, cause yourself a lot more work or put yourself in sticky situations sometimes, because when you produce a film, especially, you know, like let's be honest there's a financial portion to it there's risk attached to it um while it's like creative and fun and um you get to feel like you're you know you're telling a story all that's great but it's also a business so you you have to be careful you know you're you're putting your, your name and all that kind of stuff on the line so having someone to talk to is i think very important and it it you're right newfoundland is a great place for that I think because um, we have so much work here right now, which is fantastic, we really need to grow our industry pretty quickly if we want to keep up and not turn people away. Because everyone wants to come here and film now, but we don't have enough crew <laughs> to like support all the things that want to come here. So the faster we can kind of get people in the door and get them learning, the better. And that's in every position. I mean. We're short on producers, we're mm-hmm. short on, you know, sound, grips, everything. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it doesn't, I don't think it matters even specifically what department you're in. Just, you know, reach out to people and see if you can kind of get your foot in the door that way. What you're saying about like the financial responsibility of a producer or even like the responsibility of a producer in general, I think that that's the thing that most people don't realize about what a producer does is it's, it it seems to me anyway, to be the job where you take on responsibility for what, for everything that happens. So how do you deal with that as a new producer trying to take on larger projects like uh, I guess maybe I can simplify this question how did you move from your being in a position of where you're the mentee to making a short film like what were those steps of responsibility like for you that's a really great question and I think you're completely right in saying you often hear like you tell someone like what do you do you're a producer oh what does that mean (laughs) yeah what does does a producer do right nobody really knows um and that's because it's it's so broad but one thing that's I think always in common between no matter what avenue sort of of producing you you take on the most um is is that sort of risk um Hard, I suppose. So for me, I was really, I'm really fortunate that I got accepted to do my first short film through a program at NIFCO called Picture Start. And through that, there's like, there's guidance, you know, you have people, I don't want to say holding your hand because they really give you a lot of freedom in it to make your own decisions. But if you have questions or you're unsure about anything, you know, they're there to really show you how to go about it. Um, You know, what applications to do. They make sure that you're in a position financially that you can execute what you're trying to execute. So having that um, 
it gives you a really good basis for sure. Um, like when you're starting out. So if you can find a way to like access one of these programs that actually have like mentorship sort of built into it, I think that's a great way to start. It certainly was for me. And from there, one of the, <laughs> one of the good things, I suppose sometimes it's a pain, but one of the good things is that any funder that you're going to trying to get money from, they're not just going to give you money without you proving you can handle it. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes it's hard when you're like, oh, I need more money <laughs> to do this film. And they're like, no, we're going to keep you at this level. Um, but at the same time, like, you know, there's a reason that you sort of take steps. There's a reason that you, while I think short films totally have their place in the world and are exciting to make, and I don't think we should ever stop making them, they're also sort of like resume builders in a sense. Mm -hmm. You know, no one's going to give you a million dollars to go make a feature film, or I shouldn't say never, but not very often without a producer or a director or somebody attached to it, proving that they can handle budgets of that size and the risk and everything that goes along with that. Like, you know, all the business aspects as well. So you kind of like, I, I have anyways, kind of gone like step-by-step, step, almost like a ladder in terms of my budgets, size of the projects, lengths of the projects, that sort of stuff. So, you know, I, I went from like my short film, uh, you know, a couple of short films, then to, you know, like 45 minute stuff. And then I've, you know, now I've done two features and hoping to do my third now in the next, um, like next year. And each one of those features, you know, started off, one was like a talent to watch project. So, you know, lower budget, definitely. The next one I actually got uh, licensed by Documentary Channel and CBC. So that had like a bit more kind of behind it. Yeah. And now the next one should be higher again. Um, am I answering your question? <laughs> you, you totally are. That's, <laughs> I, that's... I might be going on a tangent. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it, it's, it's a step-by-step -step basis. Uh, you know, I, it doesn't have to be, I suppose. I'm sure there's exceptions to every rule. But I think it's actually smart to do it that way. I mean, everybody wants to do this, their big budget feature, but sometimes you kind of got to put it in your back pocket and say, I need to learn first. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't want to do, um, you know, this dream movie or dream script that I have until I know what I'm doing, you know, because honestly, it's, you know, while I'm super, super happy with the work that I've put out and like my partners as directors and stuff have put out at the beginning, I, like to have no regrets and so proud of it. I really hope that I, I do even better and, and get bigger and put out even, even better content if, you know, um, as I progress. So you, you kind of have a few like frequent collaborators, I think, like Cody Westman stands out because you mm -hmm. guys did Casey together and then Hell or Clean Water together as well. Yeah. And I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that collaboration and how that grew from a small -er project to something much larger. Yeah, I, I, I've actually, I kind of have like two people that I've partnered with, which is definitely Cody and I you know, we're going to keep doing stuff and putting out content. And also Ruth Lawrence, another uh -huh. local director here, um, who I did my first feature with, and I'm going to be doing my next feature with. Um, so it, yeah, I mean, me and Cody actually met through Mary Sexton, who I worked with previously. Um, and we applied for Picture Start together. He had done a short film called, um, it could be you uh, before that. And I like production managed it. It was mm -hmm. also very green at the time on that too. Um, and yeah, we just got along. And so we kind of started working together, you know, doing things like smaller things. And you kind of develop like a, 
like a comfort level and a rapport with someone as you start making these sort of big decisions and and goals and all this kind of stuff and if you find someone that you're kind of have like you work with really well you know um you have the same sort of vision Mm -hmm. I think it's really important you you know at he's a director so I love his style and the way he executes things and the way he thinks about things like it it works for me so I just and I think the way I work as a producer works for him so we kind of um just started moving forward with like different ideas and we got um he came to me one day he said you know I heard this great story about a diver named Sean Bath who was like here locally in Newfoundland who's cleaning up uh, the ocean floors and I was like that sounds amazing we need to learn more about this <laughs> and so Cody kind of followed up with them and got the scoop of what he was doing and we pitched it to Doc Channel and they loved it and you know it takes time and there was all kinds of um, ups and downs and trying to get, get um, the film lit like greenlit but we did and we got everything we needed and I think made a fantastic film that I'm, you know, we're both really, really proud of. And so we just, because we've taken on these big, um, bigger steps together, I think, yeah, like it's kind of like a bond right? <laughs> in a sense, because yeah. it's never over, you know, like we started that film in, I don't know, 20, 2018, 2019, and it's only going to be premiering on Dow Channel in November of this year. And then we're still doing like internet, trying to do like international sales and international festivals. And, you know, there's tax credits that take two to four years to do. Like, you're just, you have to be, um, yeah, you have to be careful and really sure about the people you make these commitments with because you're in it for the long haul and um I've been really really lucky with Cody and also Ruth who me and Ruth did Little Orphans together which um was a challenge because it was so low budget and it was just a fantastic experience um even given the challenges so we've kind of hooked up to do the next one and sure that will have its challenges too but when you're just around great people who inspire you it's just it, it's fun you know it makes yeah it easy. easier to meet those challenges for sure when you're yeah. you're with like-minded people uh mm -hmm. I'm curious about hearing you say you know it's never over I'm curious if you feel like dips in your own like personal momentum and how you deal with that Oh, yes. <laughs> um, there, there's been moments um, where I've questioned everything that I've done and is, you know, is this where I want to be? Because it can be really hard at times, um, especially if you're in any like um, sticky situations, because um, they happen, you know, especially we were making a documentary. It's, it's not as cut and dry sometimes as a scripted feature and even scripted features can do the same thing but you know there was there was definitely some moments where we um we weren't sure if it was all going to work out in the end um and and those moments it can be really you just want to throw in the towel <laughs> you're just like I'm, I just want to walk away from all this um and trying to I, I think that's where the good partners come in because they kind of you feel supported um, and they kind of can keep you keep you going um, in those challenging times. And the other portion of film, which is I don't think people think of too much sometimes is, you know, you have a project and it's, you know, it's you're all in when it's going there. You have no other life besides a project. And then you could be done that project and it could be another year before you get another one going. And during that time can be awfully challenging as well. Cause you're like, what am, what am I doing with my life? 
again, yeah. Is there gonna be another one? Why can't I get something funded or you know, a really big lull? And and then there's financial implications to that. I'm not working as much. Um, you know, it, it can be there's highs and lows, um, for sure. So I think just you kind of you have to pace yourself. Personally, what I've kind of done in my career is I try to do one project a year and work on somebody else's project a year. Because yeah. while working on someone else's project um, is, is great, you know, it pays the bills sometimes. Uh, it's not what I want to do long term, but it does take so long to get a project off the ground that I think working on other people's projects kind of get you through those lulls a bit and um, so that that's kind of how I've balanced out um, my career sure it might take me a little bit longer to do stuff because of it but it's it's a good balance for me yeah it seems like maybe a good way to learn more and put some tips you know in your back pocket for your own projects later as well oh, sure yeah, no, that, that's a great point. Um, just on the last show I did, it, it was my first time coordinating a series and I learned so much on that about contracting and different, um, I don't know, avenues of that, like that I didn't actually know before because you shoot differently. You have to think differently than you do on a feature film. And I've been mostly in feature film world. So it was, yeah, it was a it was really interesting to learn that aspect of it. And, you know, I'll, I'll definitely take those tips with me to the next project that I go on. And again, if I, you know, end up working on other series, just more and more experience to get you better and better and move into higher positions and other shows. And I think that's how a lot of people start out, at least kind of from what I've heard is mm -hmm. even, even like um, directing, you know, like I know so many, directors who start out started off as continuity on series or you know different just different avenues there's nothing what I kind of love about this industry is that there's no like standard on how to get anywhere you know it's it, you can you can jump around I mean there's people who do I know people who do hair and makeup and grip like yeah. it's amazing multi-talented um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit crazy. I don't think there's many industries in the world where you can kind of like jump around or fluctuate and, and, and also like on one film go from like this high level position to in the next one, you know, you could be bottom of the barrel. Um, it's, it's funny. Yeah, it's its own thing for sure. And I think that's kind of what's a bit addictive about it in a sense, you know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah. You always, you always hear people talk about the film industry. I'm like they got hooked into it. Yeah. And, well, yeah. there's so many different opportunities and also opportunities to pursue in terms of like your own projects, really anything that interests you at all. So having that possibility there, I, yeah. it seems like that helps with drive for a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, I've done, um, you know, narrative features and I've done documentaries, which are totally different worlds and I've only done two features and they're both from completely different backgrounds uh -huh. so I love having the ability to just tell whatever story that you feel is important no matter where it sort of comes from so do you feel like producing television or show running or something like that is in the cards for you in the future <laughs> Um, I'd love it to be, uh, you know, I, I think I'm, I'm inspired by the people around me who are putting off these big productions and I'd love to get to that point. Um, but you know, it, it comes with its own challenges as well. You know, the responsibility that we talked about earlier, um, and I was telling you before this started, like I'm six months pregnant. So <laughs> it's kind of like, oh dear, that's some long hours to invest yeah. when you have a newborn. <laughs> um, so, you know, I'm definitely at that 
I'm at a kind of a strange point in my life where it's like, how am I going to balance that work life? Um, yeah, like, how do you balance that, right? But no, I definitely want to. It's just, uh, I need to find the right project that will make sense for me um, and, and my, my family life as well. Uh -huh. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, I guess they'll like questions about the future and how you're going to balance it all. It's going to change when, you know, there's a, a, a new uh, factor. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> it's, uh, it's never been an issue before to do a 14 hour day. You mm -hmm. know, um, I, you go in and you, you do what you got to do. And you, as we were saying earlier, like when you're on a production, it's kind of like, there's nothing else going on in your life besides working on that show because they can be all consuming, no matter, I think, what role you're in, if you're producing it or if you're PAing it or, you know, whatever, it's, um, it's a lot all the time. So yeah, it's just trying to find the right balance, I suppose, and the right projects um, as, I, as I move forward, um, how that will work. I don't have all the answers yet, but I'm sure I, you know, I'm sure it will kind of come along because that's was we were talking about the possibilities are endless, right? So that's one of the great things. Yeah. And I think it's a really positive thing that it seems like people are talking more about how important it is to maintain our health as um, you know, we're not just workers we also have lives and you know especially I think there's a lot of uh I don't know if stigma is the right word but there's a lot of pressure on women who are working artists and pursuing their own projects about like starting a family and if if I would have time or you know what what about childcare? and these are all things that I think that artists in all kinds of disciplines are talking about more it seems that way anyway um and i think that's yeah. important and that's the how we're going to make things better in that way uh, yeah i completely agree it's it's starting to become a bigger conversation as we find more women being um i, I should say like kind of like growing um in positions in the industry and more initiative behind getting women involved at, as artists in any discipline, like you said. One thing I know, like when I worked on Little Orphans um, and I did that with Ruth, we, we had a lot of women um, involved in that production and we had pregnant women working on that production as well. And one thing me and Ruth talked about like in early, early days was that we didn't want to push our crew to the breaking point because one, it was low budget and we didn't want to take advantage of, you know, what you're paying someone versus the time that they're putting in. And we just didn't feel there was a need, you know, like some, I, you know, they're kind of like on strike or go, wanted to go on strike about it in the US, like, because the hours are just sometimes way too crazy. And I just, I don't think it's necessary all the time. I mean, you might have, we, like, we had one 14 hour day on our feature, but I think the rest of them, like, there was days we wrapped at like 10 hours, nine hours. And I, I think if you plan it well enough and you, as a, and this really kind of falls on a director too, to be able to execute what they want um, in the time that they're given, it's definitely a skill. It's, you know, something you'll, people learn. I think it's, you know, not necessarily a given, um, but I, I think all these things are really integral to kind of solving that issue of work-life balance. Um, it, it really comes from all departments and all people, like not just producers. And I feel like I could talk to you for hours. Uh, so thank you so much for this. Oh, no, I hope, I, I mean... And some of this was useful to someone somewhere. <laughs> I don't know, sometimes the, uh, you know, because every um, path is sort of different, I find in this, in this industry, it's like, 
you don't really know if what you're sharing is actually going to help someone. But I think, you know, the biggest takeaway is, is that that's okay. Um, however you get there, you get there, you know? Yeah. This whole idea of, you know, there is no one path and that's good and bad, uh, bad in the sense of what do I do, but good in the sense that you can kind of create it for yourself, it seems. And that's why mm -hmm. I, you know, really wanted to talk to you and, and wanted to talk to other local filmmakers, because I know that everyone has such a different story. And I find like as an emerging artist, one of my favorite things to do is listen to people talk about their careers and their lives without necessarily like the goal of giving you a like broken down list of go to film school, get a mentorship with this specific person, you know? Uh, yeah, cause it's just like the, you know, the, your person who's, who's really made it work. And so it's interesting to me to hear some of the steps well, you took to get there. I definitely, had a lot of doors open to me by my mentorship and things like that but I and not to sound like full of myself or something but I worked really hard when I had those doors open for me and I gave it my all and did the best that I could do and I think people will recognize that and they see that and that's what can get you really far in this industry because it's hard work no matter what you're doing and if they can recognize that you're willing to learn, um, you're going to make mistakes. I don't think anyone is going to fault someone for making mistakes when they're new. But if you just kind of keep showing up and doing what's expected of you, you know, you'll make it far. And, and that's almost true for whatever job you do in life, I suppose. But I do think because of um, some of the pressures that these kind of positions can put on you. Sometimes it's harder to maintain that good work ethic um, for such long periods, for such long hours and stuff. But, you know, that's probably my biggest piece of advice, I suppose, is just do your best and um, try and find like-minded people and, you know, the endless possibilities that can exist from that. I think that's excellent advice. <laughs> Thanks so much, Jenny. Oh, no problem.